Van D, a dynamic leader with decades of experience building companies and crushing sales. He's been there and done that. Ladies and gentlemen, hello, my name is Van D. Inspiring audiences across the country to do it too. Here's Van. Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the Van D podcast. I'm so glad you tuned in today because we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics. And that is customer service. Customer service to me, you know, it's not a department. It's not a customer service department. It's an attitude. And there's nobody better to discuss this topic than my friend, Jeff Shapiro. Let me give you a little background on Jeff. Jeff is the executive vice president of Centris Federal Credit Union. And Jeff oversees production of many business departments, which includes mortgage, commercial lending, auto lending, as well as residential construction. So Jeff is involved in all aspects of customer service, from sales to management. He's been in the business for over 40 years in customer service. And ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Jeff Shapiro. Jeff, thanks for joining me. Hi, Van. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. 40 years is a uh, is a polite way of saying a long time. So, <laughs> well, uh, how can you be in customer service for 40 years when you're only 39? Well, that's true. That's true. 30, 39 and holding. So, uh, you know, customer service, sales, uh, production, it's all, uh, I've had many years of, of doing that it's and uh, in many industries too. Yeah. So, uh, this is, this is a, this is a fun time to be here. It's, yeah. A little stressful right now, but it's still a fun time to come to Right. Work. Yeah. yeah, things are changing and, you know, we're having to adapt and do things. And are you working out of your house, Jeff? With Part, co- part-time. I was, uh, I w- we went home um, for a few months now. Uh, I'm now getting back to the office wearing a mask, uh, being socially distanced. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I do a lot of work at home, but I, I'm, I'm trying to get back to the office. I'm an office guy. I, I like getting dressed. I like getting dressed and going yeah. to the office, and that's how I do my work. And uh and so and I like being with people. I think the toughest thing in this right now is the fact, and you're the same way. Yeah. The toughest thing is just not being with people. You know, yeah. It's not the same on Zoom. It's not the same on the phone. It's, it's, you just, I like being with people and getting a reaction and, and coaching them and seeing them smile, seeing them laugh. Right. And especially you, Jeff. I have been fortunate enough to meet most of your team. Yes, you have. Um, I was uh, very blessed and fortunate to be able to speak at your convention you had in San Diego of April, in April of 2019. Mm-hmm. And man yes. alive. Uh, and first of all, thank you again for that opportunity. But the people I met, um, you could just tell, which is why I'm so glad you're my guest today, because everybody just seemed like they love their job and they love working with Jeff Shapiro and they love Centris Federal Credit Union. And you know, I got a chance to meet people not just on a business setting and um, even more through, you know, doing business with your company the last couple of years. But uh, um, you guys are doing a lot of things right. And, and, and back to working from home, I know it's tough on guys like you and I because we like to go look at people, you know, right in person and visit with them about their, their challenges or how great their day is going or their family, you know. Well, that's true, and 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 you're the same way. I like I like seeing the reaction of people. You know, right. when, when you're face to face with people, you can see the reaction. It's not the same. It's not the same negotiating on the phone. It just it, it just isn't that way. Um, I grew. I've been in the in the real estate business and the mortgage business for a long time, and I remember a time when, quite frankly, I remember a time when, when as a realtor, we would qualify our own people. We wouldn't talk to the lender about qualifying. And I know you did this too. When you when you first met with your clients, you'd say, "Okay, let's talk about what you can afford. Let's see what we can do to put this together." Today we have, and that's fine with us. We'd rather have them talk to us because it's a little more complicated putting a mortgage together. But today we have our lenders do the qualifying, and so we, it's a partnership that we have between the the realtor, the buyer, uh, and, and 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 us. And so we we like to get together with those people and and there was a time when you'd sit down with them like we are face to face and you go through things now now you now we do it online we do it uh, on the phone we yeah. you know you, we have technology where you can actually upload your documents to us you can apply online you can do everything online it's a it's a new day here it's a- well and there's a 
there's a great possibility you may never meet the people that you're doing business with, at least on the real estate end. I can't tell you how many deals I do because everything is digital, yeah, I, you know, I, where you don't meet the other realtor. I, I, I hope it doesn't totally come to that yeah. because I still enjoy <laughs> meet, meeting people. But, uh, we, you know, we're talking about customer service and customer service is really meeting your, in our case, our members, our yeah. customers, where they are. And we've always talked about, you want to come in and make an application, you want to do it online, you want to do it over the phone, you know, we, we want to meet you where you are. Um, there's less coming in now, obviously, with uh, we, we just opened our lobbies up again. And we've we did a good job of pushing our people out remotely so we can actually work remotely. And uh, our processing center is now remotely, our underwriters are now remotely, but with technology, we can do it all all together, all on the phone. So we're all, all on technology. So Digital seems to be the way it's going, and uh, I've sort of fought it for a while. But you know, my 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 children, my grandchildren, they're they're showing me the way. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a problem with my iPad. I call it my grandson. Yeah. I say Joshua, how do I do That's this? Right. And, he, and he's and he says, Yeah, Papa, here's how you do that. So I think we're all in that situation. You know, one of the things when you and I talk and we have lots of visits about business is you always like to say that. Uh, from the home lending aspect, at least also, is it's very important to under-promise and over-deliver. Oh, yes. And I know how important that is to you. Is that something that you really remind your team of? Sure. Yeah, we talk about that all the time. Under-promise, over-deliver. Uh, say what you're going to do. Do what you're going to say. Um, in 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 the mortgage lending area, it's uh, it, it's stressful. It's, we try to make it less stressful, but in the mortgage lending area, in the in the real estate side, there's there's all sorts of things happening in, pers- in their personal life. So you buy a house, and and you're it's a large it's the largest one of the largest financial transactions you're going to do this year, if not for many years. You have uh, moving vans coming, you have things being sold, you have uh, babysitters coming. What are you going to do with a dog? Uh, it's it's a stressful time, so we need to make sure that we set those expectations up front. What we're selling is knowledge. A customer service, in my mind, is knowledge. How do you put the deal together? You talk to a borrower. You say, "What are your what's your situation? What's your credit? What how much cash do you have? What's your employment? What's your situation?" You need to put all those together so that when we send this into our underwriters and our processors, our our lenders know this is going to go smoothly or this isn't going to go smoothly. We maybe need to, this extra piece of documentation. The last thing we want to do is call up that borrower. Or the, or, or the realtor saying, wait a second, we got a problem here because we something showed up that we didn't see. We want to make sure we see everything up front. And that's what I call customer service. We want to make sure that we're up front with people. We tell them up front what's going to happen, and it's going to happen. Uh, I came down here 11 years ago now, and one of the first things I started telling people is, our people is, we close on time every time. When we tell you you're going to close on the 23rd of the month, we're going to close on the 23rd of the month. When they sign a contract with a realtor on that contract, it says closing date is 23rd of the month. We're going to do everything in our power to make sure that we're closing on the 23rd of the month. So that's what we do every time. As a real estate guy, I really appreciate that because that's not, that's not everybody's attitude in the mortgage business. I've had people say, well, at least we got it done. And it's, that's not good enough. No. You know, the way you um, look at it is if we say this date, this is the date it's going to happen. Yeah, it's not a target. That's written, that's a contract. We're going to close on the date that we tell you. So trying to be the best, I mean, being the best you can be at customer service isn't one key ingredient for all of us in sales and and uh, marketing. Isn't one key ingredient is listening. Oh. Is listening to your customer. Very, very much so. You, I tell my people that we've got the greatest jobs in the world. We get to talk to people all day long listen to their needs, Mm -hmm. and then figure out what we have that will present to them, figure out what we have that will fit their needs, and we present to them what we have that will fit their needs. So listening is a real key key thing. So we we need to listen to to the needs. We know what we have. We know what products we have. We know what services we offer. But, Van, tell me what you need. What what brings you in today? How can I help you? So that's, that's what we do. And that's an area I wish somebody would have told me when I first got on straight commission, when I was 23 years old selling real estate, um, I was not a good listener. Thank the good Lord, I got business like crazy and I have, I'm, I have a decorated career in real estate. However, I could have done so much more if I was a better listener. 
I didn't become a great listener until later in life. And I, and you know, it's so important because I was so excited about what I wanted to tell them that I was going to do instead of, so I talked myself out of more deals than I gained. Well, that's, and that's basic sales training. If you, if right. you go back to the, these great sales trainers, right. they tell you to listen, you know, you can, you can talk yourself out of deals. Yeah. You, know, you can become your own sales prevention department. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> just, right. just listen and people will tell you what they need and you make some suggestions and, and they'll, they'll make it happen. So something I want to bring up with you is first of all, my take on customer service and just some strategies is we all know that when you're with people, smiling is important. Eye contact is important. Patience with the conversation is essential. Of course, being warm and friendly is a must and, and providing a, a, especially in our industry, Jeff, providing a positive emotional experience for, um, for the customer is a priority. But to me, these are not the greatest customer service strategies. You know, when I visit with clients, when I go speak to companies and we'll have conversations and they'll say that, you know, we do a lot of, I'll just use this as an example. We do a lot of customer surveys so we can get better. I may ask a question, what are you doing as a company to get better in customer service? And they come back and they say, we do extensive customer surveys. And I said, okay, what are you doing for your employees, for people that are, are running the ship, people that are working in the company? Well, we don't, we don't do surveys for them. Well, in my opinion, uh, and maybe it's from having 350 employees uh, when I owned Deep Realty, is my philosophy was this is a company built by agents for agents. So it was common sense to me. I didn't read it in a Zig Ziglar book or the Harvard School of Business. To me, is, to me common sense was if it's important to the people that are keeping the lights on that work in the company, it's more important um, to the customer. So I would look at the people that work in the company. I treated them as my customers. And don't you think if there's anybody you should be taking surveys from, it's the team of people that you work with because those are the ones that we want to make happy. Yeah. The people that work in the firm. You know, it's interesting. Uh, we feel the same way. We talk about as a financial institution, as a credit union. I'm not sure if you or, or the listeners are familiar with credit unions, but we're actually owned by our the, uh, our, our members, right? We're not. We're not. We're not. We're, I, I'm an equal owner as everybody else is in the credit union. We are. Uh, we've been around for. Centers have been around for 80 years in the Omaha area. Um, we have uh, assets of 800 million dollars or so. Uh, we have deposits. We have loans. We we're, we're we are a uh, substantial operation in the credit union industry. But you know, we feel our number one asset. Our best asset that we have that we keep and that we try to cultivate are our employees, mm. our team members. Mm. And, Amen and, to and that. that. And that, and, and that comes from the top down. We have everybody in uh, management, everybody in, uh, on the front lines. We all feel that our, our team members are our most important asset. And, and that's, and that's how we feel. we we do surveys. We talk to people about that. You were at one, you were at our president sales and service conference. We, we take our, we, we believe a rising ties, rising tide raises all ships. We take our best people and we take them somewhere and we say, here, we're going to do this for you. Now, with COVID, it's a thank you. With, with COVID we're not doing <laughs> right. <that somewhere>. right. <laughs> we're not, we're not going anywhere right now. So, uh, but we'll, we'll get back to that. This is so, temporary. Yeah, this is temporary, but, uh, but that's how we feel. And that, and that's how we feel on a daily basis. And that's how we, but that's how, that's how we treat our people that way. Well, it, it's real obvious. So, so when I think of Centris Federal Credit Union, you know, I found that organizations that deliver best service also have the best culture um, where, you imval where you value the employees, you listen and care for um, what their needs are, which makes them better at, at serving their customers. So I've looked at companies like Best Buy. So Best Buy started to measure the engagement of their employees in the process of service and in service, and they saw their profits improve. 
Um, T-Mobile did the same thing, um, and they improved and transformed their customer service only after they improved their culture with their employees. Um, and they started listening more. So I've studied these companies like T-Mobile and and Best Buy, and my favorite one that I've got a chance to really learn, and I'm I'm a customer as of it's Southwest Airlines. Um, I thought you'd bring that up. I yeah. was going to bring that up too. When Southwest, yeah. when the president says, you know, the employee is always right. Yeah, uh, I love that, and it's you obvious. Your, if you treat your employees well, they'll treat your customers. Yeah, well, I, I mean, you know what, Jeff? I want to tell you something. I had a company. I had a company in Dallas ask me to come speak to their organization, and they said, Van, um, we can get you here on American Airlines in an hour and a half nonstop. And I said to him, I said, I really prefer Southwest Airlines. I said, I'm a big fan of their culture, and um, I want to support them. And they go, well, you'd have to do a layover in St. Louis, and it'd end up being a four to four and a half hour trip. And I said, I'm fine with that. Now, I know they probably hung up and they go, what kind of idiot did we just hire to come speak to us? But my loyalty is to people that have that kind of culture. I want to do business Mm -hmm. with a Southwest Airlines, with a Centrist Federal Credit Union, because of the way they treat their employees, the way that their culture is. You know, when we do this, all we're doing is we're assuring that the customers are going to have a great experience. Yeah, that's and that's our goal is to is to in the mortgage area especially we we have a we have a culture in our commercial area the same way and and we do auto lending it's the same way you, you want to remove that friction you want to move that 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 stress you want to you want to treat people well and get them on their way uh, the the mortgage area um, we 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 know our people. We treat our people well. We realize it's stressful for our people for for the whole the whole transaction, and right. we want to make sure people. I, I don't want to tell you how many pizzas I bought for our people because it just it's a stressful. Well, you could day. have brought a pizza with you today. <laughs> it's a stressful day. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't have pizzas anymore. If my wife's listening. I'm not having pizzas anymore. <laughs> so, um, but we do that. We treat people well. You you have to do that for people. I believe you have to do that for people. Well, and, and so that's some of the key ingredients to making sure your cus your company has a great customer service culture is you know if you want your people to care care about them if you want your team to love their work love them if you want your employees to be their best then we need to give them our best if you take care of your people they will take care of you as customers and and i know you have that philosophy like i said when I had this topic I wanted to talk about on customer service, I thought of Centris and I thought of Jeff Shapiro because I know well, that you. that's natural for you. You aren't a guy that's going, hmm, how can I get better at customer service today? Let me read this book. Yours is common sense. Well, it's common sense. And, you know, and again, I, I talk about top-down management is I – I enjoy, and, and our, our, my boss, and we enjoy coming to work every day. I enjoy doing this. I, yeah. I you know, and I enjoy, I enjoy helping people do better. I enjoy first time home buyers. I loved first time home buyers. We, we get them closed. And, you know, and when I used to, when I was originally more, I'd, and when we used to go to closings, it'd be great to go to a closing. Not that I didn't like all closings, but yeah. when you close for a first time home buyer, boy, and, you, and, they, and they walked out of that, they were like walking yeah. like two feet off the ground. They were, yeah. they were, this and was, you got this to was, be there for that yeah. and help them facilitate that. I look at that as, you know, I'm still selling real estate after 38 years and I, God's willing, I'll never give it up. But, you know, I get so excited for buyers and sellers because it's the biggest investment of their life and they deserve to have people like Jeff Shapiro's company and, and mine to help them facilitate the biggest investment of their life. So Jeff, we all have unique stories that stand out in our careers. I know I've got enough to, to probably do a hundred podcasts, but um, can you tell us, do you have a unique story about maybe a first time buyer sure. or or something that, you know, my audience will love. We've got many unique stories. <laughs> and you and I could be here for a couple hours oh, talking sure. about unique stories. But 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 there's one that really sticks to me that re- really jumps out at us. And uh, when I got here, came down here from Minneapolis to be by my kids and my now my grandkids uh, 11 years ago now, we, we looked around and we said, you know, 
we need a first time homebuyer program. We, we need our own first time homebuyer program. There was several things that were, weren't working. We could do a 97% loan to value, but people, you couldn't, the gift funding, if you remember the gift funding sure. was kind of goofy. And I, we looked at it and said, you know, gift funding from parents is, is a real deal. And so we kind of, kind of made a first time homebuyer program. And through the years it's, it's changed a little bit, but one of our, one of the great parts of this first time homebuyer program is we were able, we did our own underwriting. We use our own funds to do the deal. Uh, I was called a few years ago by a good friend of mine uh, who uh, is uh, volunteers at the, our synagogue and, and he, they help, uh, they help refugees come to the country. They, they work with Lutheran family services and, and they help refugees come to the country. And Alan called me up and said, I got this guy. Um, he's got a great story and, and he needs some help and he's been here for a few years and, you know, can you get him a mortgage? I said, well, tell me the stories. Tell me what's going on. So uh, this is a couple that was a refugee from Afghanistan. She was the youngest person in, in government and in elected office in Afghanistan. He worked for Karzai, the president. They were, they were very, very mm-hmm. much in, in, in the government. Uh, they had death threats. They, she survived a bombing of her car. Uh, they, they were trying to, they were going to kidnap the children and they said, that's it. We're out of here. And with the help of the U S government, they got to the U S and they were lived in a couple of places and they were familiar with, uh, and I forgot if she had been to a conference here in Omaha. So they, they made their way to Omaha. Um, he was working at home Depot, uh, he, just rebuilding their whole, rebuilding their whole life. Um, so they came to us and said, can you help us? And so I said, you know what, we're a credit union. If these people are, if, if there's people that need help, this is what we're here for. So uh, Jeannie Lamori, one of our lenders, I said, Jeannie, help, see if we can help these people. And she she just carried that file through and we got them into a house. And mm. it's just a fantastic story. And as a matter of fact, there was an article in the Omaha World Herald about these people. So, uh, um, I, you know, it just kind of, that's the that's the thing when you start doing this stuff. And, and a lot of first-time home buyers are great. But that, that this is a great story, then uh, a great story of the of the U.S., a great story of the country, a great story of Omaha. Uh, we're glad to help, and uh, it's really, really, it really is a feel good story. So it, uh, it's stories like this that make your position more worth it. You know, that makes oh, your yeah. that makes what your challenges are in life trying to help people. Or um, and I love that. And I and I read the article in the Omaha World Herald about this couple. And I tell you, they've been through a ton. Mm-hmm. And then they come here to Omaha, Nebraska, and they have uh, a lender like Centris Federal Credit Union that's going to embrace them and do the best they can to make their lives better. And I tell you, home ownership does that. Makes you feel like you know. I always tell would would tell first time buyers, you now own a piece of the earth. And there's something about that. You I do. think it That's makes right. you care more. I think it makes you more involved. And uh, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of of stories like you have with helping people. I know you got a ton of those. Home ownership is still a, still a great investment. I mean, the home ownership is is really an investment in your community, an investment in, in your future. It's it's really it's really good. Uh, I can talk to you about our commercial area lately because with the pandemic and with everything going on. Uh, there was an uh, we had this payroll protection program, this PPP sure, program, sure. and we as a credit union, our commercial area, we were the largest. As a matter of fact, Nebraska was one of the largest users of the PPP program per capita per business, mm. and we as a credit union were one of the largest uh, uh, originators of the payroll protection plan in the whole credit union community. And we we are you know Kevin Svack, our our uh, uh, senior vice president over in commercial, he he put the group together and. We had people there till midnight some nights just because of the way this process was. It was laborious. It was government stuff. And and credit to the government for coming out with this program because it helped a lot of people. But, the you know, you could do the details, and sometimes sure. it takes a little bit longer to do. So we had people there, and we helped a lot of people out with that. And that's just what we do. We're just part of the, part of the community and uh, part of being part of what we do. So um, – I'm proud of those guys. You know, and I've talked to several people that are um, loan professionals at your company, and it seems like your customers stay with you on their first home, their second home, their third home. And I tell you, you know, for customer service, that speaks volumes. 
Because if you weren't good at it the first time, you don't get the second time. Yeah. You don't get the second and third home. So obviously, you know, you talk talk about people staying with us. We have, uh, and, and our important asset being our employees, we have we have people, our team members that have been with us for forty years. Yeah. We every every month we get a list of who's celebrating what anniversary and. We just had one person, I think it was 42 years that have been with us. And that's very unusual because yeah. in the mortgage and real estate business, you jump on the train that's going the fastest. Yeah. So that says a lot about you guys. Jeff, I'm so grateful that you stopped in today to do a podcast. Are we done? Me. Is it over? Unfortunately, I like to keep them. I like to keep them under 25 there, minutes so people listen. Is there? Can we do the series two or something? Yeah, yeah. we'll just do we'll just do part one, two. We'll do like Star Wars. We'll get up to part two. There you go. But I'm just grateful for you stopping in. And I know this is a topic. And i tell you what I'd like to do. I'd like to have you back again. Anytime. And we'll, we'll continue our, our uh, discussion on customer service. But, Jeff, in the meantime, I want my audience to know how they can do business with, with you and Centris Federal Credit Union. Can you give them some direction on sure, how they can sure. do business with you? Sure. Uh, we're... We're a full-service financial institution, so if checking, savings, whatever you need, uh, commercial lending. But if you need something from us, call our number. It's 402-334-7000. Talk to the nice person in the line. Tell them what you need, and they will get you to the right person. Uh, CentrusFCU.org is our website. Uh, You can go there, and you can search around a little bit. Um, We can get you what you need. Um, uh, uh, We're on Facebook. We're on on social media. We... We have people that know a lot more about that than I do, so they, they take good care of that. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're there. If you see someone walking around with a Centra shirt on, stop them and say hello, and uh, we'd love to take care of you. Well, I really appreciate it, and I can, I can vouch for Centrist. You know, just good human beings uh, that care more than, uh, than they're required to, and I love being around people like that. And Once again, Jeff Shapiro. Thank you for being my guest today. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. And you guys all have a great day out there. And thanks for tuning into the Van D Podcast. Please know how much I appreciate it. I'm going to ask you to please rate this, review it, and most of all, subscribe. So when my podcasts come out, you get it right away. Thanks for listening. A Parkville Media Production.